I'm so lucky. I missed your last two sessions. Hmm. Yes, and I'm also lucky that you are here. And of course, I'm so lucky that all of you are here and giving me mercy and inspiration to go on with this sharing, which is based on the sweet will of our Gurudev. Quotes from Chaitanya Charit Amrita in Sri Sri Vilap Kusumanjali. And soon also in Radharasa Sudanidi. So today we are going on from verse number 82. Yes, 82. And it's about the bashfulness and the passion of a wonderful golden lady. So first comes the theme, then comes the quote, like always. So let us start with the theme. And whenever you have this feeling that you want to share something, you are all invited to do so, please. You can give more richness because it's a sharing. So let us start. This Abhisa is very passionate, very forceful, and nothing can stop its course. It's inconceivable that she who is softer than a flower can move so swiftly. The cause of all this power is her strong attraction to Krishna's form. Sri Radhika thinks Saki, the form of Shyam appears in my heart day and night, in my dream and in my sleep. The Sakis and Mandaris become afraid when they see the force of Brahma Pagalini's Radhika, who is mad with love for Krishna. Love journey. And they say, Saki, give up your seal in meeting Krishna. Move your delicate lotus feet slowly. Now Swamini's lotus feet. And indeed, her whole body begin to hurt because of the fast course of her love journey, Abhisa. O oh, Devi, you will call me by name to engage me in massaging those painful lotus feet. Although you are Ripuncha Murtihi, the very form of abundant bashfulness. One of Sri Radhika's 108 names is Hri Patta Vastra Guptangi, she whose body is concealed by a silken garment of bashfulness. Nichala Chashyam Patasati Ritan Chaitanya Charit Amrita. Here is the quote in the connection. She wears a blue silken sari of bashfulness. 
You will not call anyone by name to help you with anything. But now you are calling me because you are overwhelmed by feelings of great love for me. I am yours only in this way and in this way you have accepted me. Isn't this astonishing? It's about the bashfulness, the quote of Chaitanya Charitamrita. How is this going together with such a great passion? Such a force on Abhisa. Isn't that astonishing? But in Swamini all these qualities are coming together. She whose body is concealed by a silken garment of bashfulness, nichala cha shyama patasati paridana. She wears a blue silken sari of bashfulness. And although she is very shy, here it is written, you will not call anyone by name to help you by anything. But now you are calling me because you are overwhelmed by feelings of great love for me. I am yours only and in this way you have accepted me. In this way, the maidservant also reciprocates and surrenders herself to Swamini's lotus feet. Govanidri, I want to say that this, this bashfulness is also, you know, it's silken, so it's soft, shining, and it's blue. It's it's the manifestation of her hidden hidden desires to meet Mohan. Because actually her whole body is made of love or is love. But at the same time, she is hiding this love. And this um, silk, you know, anyone who has touched silk silk is so beautiful and soft and it's a very magical material because also when you put on a silken dress the body also seems to be silken underneath that and we also know that in swamini it looks especially beautiful when she puts on these thin, you know, cloth that reveal all her beautiful features of how big is her breast, how thin is her waist. And although it is abundant, the bashfulness is abundant, means she is shy, she is hiding her love, she is concealing. At the same time, all of it is shining through her at the same time. So nice. Like you said, all these qualities, she is shy at the same time. Her abhisa, her running to meet her beloved Mohan is so strong that all her friends, the Sakis and the Mandris, they can hardly follow her. It's so powerful, this abhisa. Very passionate. So it's interesting, this combination 
depths of the very passionate running and moving and, and desires. And at the same time, this abundant bashfulness. So that makes her so attractive that Mohan is overwhelmed also when she comes in that mood. It's a combination of contradictory uh, qualities. But at the same time, it is so, you know, enchanting. <laughs> and the maidservant, I feel she is uh, so proud. She is expressing her pride because Gurudev often he says that we have to be proud to be Radhika's maidservant. We should not be ashamed or feel embarrassed or not feel confident about it because our Gurudev has given this to us. Swamini is confirming it. And it depends, of course, of myself, how much I am conscious of it every day or during all activities that I perform at my sadhaka dia. But the pride is a beautiful quality of this maidservant. And uh, to be called by name is also, I think it's also something that is mentioned somewhere in the Christian uh, uh, scriptures. I have called you by your name. And that is something beautiful that somebody says, I want you. And the maidservants, they also say to Swamini, I'm so proud that you call me. I am yours. And that is like an ongoing, uh, I feel when you read this, it's like an ongoing um, ecstasy that is growing. Because also in this world, isn't it? I mean, at least I can only say it for myself, but I have absorbed, absorbed it in many humans because now I am also in this human body. That a very important need is to feel loved. We need these feelings and we first get them from our mother. And then we search it everywhere until we find it in the divine and Swamini is so generous in this regard also because she is uh, so motherly and so affectionate and she gives her maidservants always these feelings I want you and that's why she also calls her by your name and it's so amazing that this happens and we can all feel very much proud that Gurudev is opening this to us I, at least I feel so proud and that's I, a good pride because that pride also in, encourages me to develop all the qualities which are my constitutional and eternal qualities as a you know, divine made servant of Srimati Radhika who calls me by my name and who calls me through Gurudev who is calling me by my name and giving me services that I feel so proud that I'm given these services. Oh, sorry, I talk too much. But this was coming in my heart, Gauravani, because it's so beautiful. I'm so happy that you are so inspired and sharing with us. We will milk you. <laughs> <laughs> but you also say something about this. I'm sure you also have deep feelings about this being called by the name and it's so astonishing. you're working like working with these kind of subjects of how to help people who don't feel loved and we all have this again and again we feel not loved we feel maybe forgotten or insignificant because that these are blockages to grow in love right Yes, you're right. And this is such a wonderful example, actually, how deep the love of Swamini is for us. Although she's completely bashful, she's very shy. She don't want that her friends 
hear that she is calling Rati Manjari for special seva. She is very shy. But anyway, she is calling her name because she loves her so much. And she needs some seva, which is the good luck for the manjari that she can help that Swamini's feet and her whole body will soon fit for another rendezvous. So it's such a deep, deep love which actually we are always connected with, but we forgot, like you said. It's there. There is this verse also from Chaitanya Charita, Amita Nitya Sita Krishna Prema, we know, Satya Kabunoi, Shravanadi, Shuddha Chitta Koro Ye Udoi. So it's there already in the heart. The garbage of thinking I'm not good enough. Oh, I was hurt so many times in this material world. All this garbage from our relationships on material platform is over that, is covering it. But it's there still. So we just, when we hear, and this is the amazing thing, when we hear in these Leelas, how Swamini loves every servant of her so much then this garbage can immediately be destroyed. Immediately it goes far away. And we understand how much we are in Maya that we think we are not loved. We are not worth of love. Huh? Swamini loves us so much. She is giving up her bashfulness for us. She needs and wants our help. So all this garbage hill can be thrown out by hearing about this sweet love Swamini has for us and of course for her beloved. And we are servants of her Mahaba. And she is actually giving us her Mahaba. It's a Bhava Deya. Our real body is made of her Mahaba. It's not just given with Mahabhav, it is made out of Mahabhav. And this is the amazing thing. Swamini is giving us our real existence. And it's already there. And she's calling us like Tulasi. Tulasi, won't you help me? But she's also calling us every moment. Won't you come and help? I'm missing you. And when we meditate, on that call, then all this garbage will go away. We hear about the Leelas, we dive in, we put our feelings, invest our feelings into that themes, and then so much is coming back. And then this garbage hill will go. What stays back is Mahabha. And 
we will also hear about this Brahma and the Mahabhav of Swamini. There are more quotes from Chaitanya Charit Amrita, of course. The next one I found is in verse number 84. The nectar of your words is mixed with the camphor of your soothing smile. In the last verse, we were just with the words of Swamini, who is calling to Lassi. And here we begin again with words, the nectar of your words. Swamini's words are not just words. Nectar, pure nectar is coming from her mouth. It is said that when she smiles, that actually, or when she laughs, that actually diamonds are falling out of her mouth. It's not just a normal laughing. It's not just ordinary talking. When Swamini is calling our name, this vibration will enter through all coverings directly in the heart and make a big fire of passion, rati. So what happens with Krishna when Radharani is talking? He melts away. So we can imagine what will happen if these words are entering our ears and our heart. The nectar of your words is mixed with the camphor of your soothing smile. So when it's very hot, it's very nice to have camphor, isn't it? It's cooling down. So this camphor of the smile of Swamini is mixed with her words. So immediately we can understand this is a very pleasing mixture. When will I see and hear you smile and talk at the same time? Someone who drinks water mixed with camphor pleases both his nose and his tangue. Similarly, both my eyes and my ears will understand your words. The face is the index of the mind. Those words that are not revealed through the heart are revealed through a smile. Sri Rata is the embodiment of love. Bremera Svarupa Deha Prema Vipavita Krishnera Preyasi Shrestha Jagat Vidita Chaitanya Chavit Amrita, here is the quote. And it describes so wonderful. Her body consists of Brahma, and she is world famous as Krishna's dear most beloved.
Without being an expert knower of such emotions, one cannot understand this. Brahma is visible on the inside and on the outside. Every act and every word of the Brahmika Bhakta, the loving devotee, is sprinkled with the rasa of Brahma and is manifest as such. It is only by great fortune that the blessed day comes when one becomes greedy after tasting the nectar of Manjari Bhav that is manifest in the prayers of Srila Raghunar Das Goswami. By hearing and chanting the great words of the Acharyas, a relish for this subject awakens. And here comes the next quote of Chaitanya Charitamrita. Hence it is said, Ihaye ekka bhari piye karnatvare Tara karna lobe iha chadite na pare Rasa tattva khyana hoi iha rasravana Prima bhakti poyarate krishnera charana Anyone who has drunk this even once through the ears becomes greedy and cannot give it up anymore. Anyone who has drunk this even once through the ears becomes greedy and cannot give it up anymore. So if you come in contact with heroin, it's like heroin. Once you touch it, once you took it, you will be addicted. You can never give it up. This is our heroin. Even the hero is completely addicted to heroin. By hearing this one, uh, by hearing this, one realizes the truth about rasa and one attains loving devotion for Radha and Krishna's lotus feet. So here we are middle in the essence, isn't it? Radha Charan Prabhu, isn't it? We are in the middle of the essence now. What do you feel about this? What is <laughs> you, you, I, uh, you thought about hero and heroine. <laughs> I was where when you uh, spoke next. I was still there <laughs> about addiction, about your voice, about your sweetness, which is essence of everything because everything about rasa uh, she is the essence of rasa she, how our sugar death is telling fifth element quint essence it's I, I i read this article it's written quint essence fifth element is like uh ether. all other elements coming from this all other goals all our attractions all other rasas everything coming from this from your love Mahabhava.
even even slight touch to her heart never forget it this sweetness which is how to say i don't know how this native native means it's your nature to be with it it's your eternity it's your own even a little bit even you even meet how to say this uh, breeze slow wind is aroma your aroma from Vrindavan which is coming through the some devotee from your homeland motherland motherland is our our place of birth where I was born in Nivrita Nikunja in the ecstasy our idea our individuality and then just the wine coming from this place through the association little little aroma and heart is saying, this is mine i'm not i'm so far from him down in my consciousness only krishna no radha i'm just new devotee from his corn but heart is telling uh i want it it is mine i don't know why <laughs> and all years it's trying to understand why it's written each time she comes to what like this i want to find the answer this subject about radha no other subjects about shimati radhika years by years i want to find the answer for this i don't know why it's hard to not say notice this because it's from my motherland it's my eternal place that actually that's that's a wonderful point actually even in the material world it's like that that children who do do not know their mother after some time they automatically search for her they want to know who is my real mother even they have a mother who was very lovely to them for so many years and growing them up but when they are not the original mother are living with the original mother they are actually starting to search even unconscious even if they don't even know that this is not the real mother i heard so many stories about this because of this of my job and this is automatically so it is like some program is installed who is always searching and this is the wonderful thing we as soul also have this program installed we search automatically at one point we search for our real mother and we want to know who is she what qualities she has and we want to be very satisfied with this information and we will be so much overwhelmed so it's really fantastic yes and you, you are such a wonderful example You're always there hearing completely addicted to again and again hear about the lilas so there must be some addiction <laughs> i'm happy to be in a circle of addicted people i'm so happy you know it's like my name is goravani and i am addicted <laughs> Ah, Jai Ho Gauravani. I had another I had another I had another inspiration. Usually when we laugh in this world we project all our desires on the other person, right? Because yes. we have many unfulfilled desires how our lover should be, how our mother should be, how our friend should be. We project this outside 
And then we are more or less always disappointed. After some time, we find out, oh, my God, that person is not like this. This person has also this and that and this and that and this and that. But if I see or feel from the platform of my eternal soul or my, you know, identity as a maidservant, my projection always be will be Swamini. And we can see it at the most in Gurudev. I can feel it in him because wherever they anybody comes that he loves and he feels their character, he's always comparing it with Swamini. Like once I met him in one festival, it is maybe 15 years ago, and I was inspired by, uh, you know, insight by Paramatma or something. Maybe it was also Swamini. At that time, I was not a Radha Bhakti, a Radha Dasi. But I was inspired to give him some um, fruit. I made a plate of fruit from the kitchen and I bring it. And I made, I try to make even a uh, coffee, although I'm not a coffee drinker and maker. I don't know how to go, how to go about that. But I, I think I made a chai or something. He was talking to some Indian guests. And then all of a sudden he looks at me and he was so happy. And he said, everything that comes from your hand is nectar. And I thought, ooh, ooh, <laughs> what is this? What is Gurudev telling? Or some, you know, I, I always see that he is seeing Swamini in every situation. And uh, we think he's talking to myself, to my conditioned self, to make me maybe feel good or so. But actually, he always sees Swamini everywhere. So my desire also as a uh, confirmed addiction, addict addictive person, <laughs> I am, my name is Suniti Dasi and I am addicted. <laughs> I try to become more addicted even. <laughs> I also want to learn to see that in all the souls, the qualities of the you know, of Swamini and of all our, you know, Rupa Manjari, Rati Manjari, of all our great role models, then we will be safe, right? Usually we are not safe because when we are, when I am full of material desires, I will project them in my inner vision on the person I want to love. And I will see that person like I would like to see that person. But then if I see them as Dasi, as Srimati Radhika's Dasi servants and all, you know, different forms that come by her mercy, by Gurdjieff's mercy, then I will be safe. <laughs> My addiction is safe. <laughs> Radhi. Thank you, Suniti. You are growing my addiction and that's why I'm here. So thank you very much. Please help me to grow this addiction. And when I'm with you, for example, in the kitchen cooking for other devotees, then my addiction will grow. So that's wonderful. There's another sentence after that quote of Chaitanya Charitamrita I would like to share with you also. So. Sri Raghunada says, your words defeat the taste of nectar a hundred times. I will drink it through my ears and through my eyes. One may ask here, words are formless. They cannot be seen, can they? How can they be seen by Tulasi? This is a secret. Tulasi made Swamini meet Krishna in a kundra. Srimati is unwilling and tells Krishna, Don't touch me. But she means to say, <laughs> touch me.
Her yes has thus swallowed her no. In this way the words don't touch me are audible, but the words touch me are visible in the eyes. In this way, Tulasi sees and hears words at the same time. And thus, she makes Shamsundara embrace Swamini by giving him a hint with her eyes. So today we have a wonderf wonderful quotes and themes. The next quotes, they are moreover, one, two, three, at least three in one text. They are in verse number 85. So first let us hear the theme. It's about Suvrate. Suvrate is translated here with dedicated girl. Although the four Vedas are constantly glorifying Sri Radha, they cannot reach the end. Here Saraswati's voice becomes silent. When the heart of Sriman Mahadev, Lord Shiva, that is Kyanamaya, filled with transcendental wisdom, comes here. It merges in Sri Radha's glories. It's such a wonderful picture. It merges in Sri Radha's glories. And the thousand-headed Ananta Deva goes beside himself here. We all know who is this Ananda Deva and we can understand that he's going beside himself here. <laughs> when the best of all devotees, Uddhava Mahashaya, understood the greatness of their sweetness, he prayed for birth in Braj even as a blade of grass or a shrub to attain the foot dust of the Brachasundaris on his head. This is described in Srimad Bhagavat. Even the Supreme Lord Vachendranandana cannot reciprocate with this sweet love. Now comes the quote. Anera kakata apane brachendra nandana avatari koren e prema asvadhana. What to speak of others? Even brachendra nandana is descending to relish this prema. What to speak of others, even Vachendranandana is descending to relish this prema. This verse conceals the root cause of Sri Goranga's dissension. Sri Radhaya Pranaya Mahima Kitrishaha. Sri Goranga Dev descended to experience the sweetness of Sri Radha's love. He relished this himself and 
concomitantly made the people of this age also qualified to relish it. And there comes another quote. Anu sange prema maya koile tri bhuvana chaitanya charit amrita. I think this is a very interesting point. He relished it and made the people of this age also qualified to relish it. By the mercy of Goranga, people who have no qualification immediately become qualified. Through the mercy, our qualification is the mercy of Goranga. which is always deeply connected with the mercy of Nityananda, which includes the mercy of Gurudev and, of course, the whole line. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu left the scholars for us who teach us till today how to accept his mercy, just accept his mercy. He's teaching us till now. And it will go on. So he made us, as people of this age, qualified to relish it. What a mercy. Just think about what would happen if these Acharyas would not there, if these books like Shishi Vilap, Kusumanjali, Chaitanya Acharya, Amrita, all this wouldn't be there. No qualification would be there. So by this mercy, we became qualified to relish it like he himself. Anu sange prema mayo koilo tri bhuvana. In this verse, Sri Raghunath perceives Swamini's flower picking pastime. You are picking flowers with your crooked and rasika girlfriends. This means that in Braj, no one deals with Krishna in a simple or submissive way. This is called Bhamyabha. And in this mood, the erotic sweetness of the Yugala Kishore becomes crystallized. In this mood, the sweetness of the Yugala Kishore becomes crystallized. Therefore, the words Rasakutila are used here. They will quarrel with Shyam over picking flowers. I know you are Suvatra. You are dedicated to the vow of delighting Shyam. When will you delight me? by engaging in such false and crooked quarrels. Sri 
Sri Banga Bihari Vichalankara writes Suvatra means a girl who is dedicated to the cause of making the Lord of her life happy. How can I make Krishna happy? And the Brachasundaris are in the highest class of the lovers that are endowed with Mahabha, which is the quint essence of Brahma. Here comes another quote. Premera Paramasara Mahabhava Jani Chaitanya Charit Amrita The minds and senses of those who are endowed with Mahabhav are saturated with Mahabhav. Saturated, it's like completely sucked with. It's completely full. It, nothing else is, can, can come in anymore. It's like you feel sugar in water till it cannot take any more sugar. It's like Rasagula. Yes, like Rasagula. Very perfect example. It's completely sucked with the nectar. So Swamini, like we said before, she's not just giving Mahabha. She's actually, she made us out of Mahabha. And that's why her kinkaris, they are completely made of Mahabha. Saturated. Nothing else inside. Srila Vishwana Chakravati writes in his Ananda Chantrika commentary on this verse Mahabhav helps the mind to regain its constitutional position. This means that the minds of the girls who have Mahabhav are entirely consisting of Mahabhav. The mind has no more separate existence from Mahabhav. The senses act according to the mind's direction. And in this way, the senses of the Braj Sundaris also consist of Mahabhav. Therefore, it is logically proven that all the activities of their senses are dedicated uh, dedicated to and dominated by Krishna. All the Bracha Sundaris have Mahabhav, but Sri Rata is Mahabhav Swarupini. She is Mahabhav Swarupini herself. She consists of nothing but Mahabha. From the tips of her two nails up to the top of her head. It is certain that Krishna is greatly delighted and controlled by each of her physical and sensual acts.
Hence, no one in the world is more worthy of the name Suprata than her. Uh, can I add a little bit? Please. About this, uh, your name, Suprata. Uh, According to Sanskrit, Su means beautiful, Sundar. And Vrata means dedicated, Vrata, dedicated. So Vrata means who is dedicated to the beautiful one. It's usually understanding, but it's nice dedication, nice dedication. But it's also, now for me, it sounds like who is dedicated to the nice person, very beautiful person. And also, she is very beautiful, Sundari. And she is the most beautiful dedicated. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In so many ways. <laughs> Her dedication is so beautiful, and she herself is so beautiful. And she is, for her, beautiful one, dedicated in such a beautiful way. Yes, that's a very nice meditation you gave us. One thing more. <laughs> Every Manjari is Sundari, very beautiful soul. Every Manjari. And she's also dedicated to them so much. Each Manjari for her, most beloved. Not less than other manjaris. Each manjari for her special, and she uh, so much dedicated, so much determination to to do everything to return this manjari. So that's wonderful. We heard about Mahabhav and Mahabhav in person. So Mahabhav is most beautiful. And there are more quotes in the same verse from Chaitanya Charit Amrita. It's still about the flower picking. And uh, here in this In these lines here it's written, in this way their sweet quarrel goes on, but by quarreling with him in this way, Swamini became known as Suvrata. So even her quarreling is wonderful and dedicated and beautiful. A girl who is unflinchingly dedicated to Krishna's pleasure. As we know, it is said that actually by quarreling with Radharani in that way, Krishna is more pleased than even if he would unite with her personally in a Nivritini Konch. So he's so much pleased with such quarrels. Shyam feels boundless bliss when he tastes the sweetness of this quarrel. Se bhava yukti Ratasya Nayana 
Sangama Hoite Sukapoya Koti Guna. When I see Rata's face and eyes in this mood, I feel a million times more happy. Ah, oh, here it comes. Then when I sexually unite with her. When I see Rata's face and eyes in this mood, I feel a million times more happiness than when I unite with her. Once I ask um, Madan Gopal Baba, what does mean pranaya? Because I had desire to go deeply in the verse Chirada uh, Pranaya Mahima Kidrishova Naiva. And he told, <clears throat> I need to ask my Gurudev. And um, he told, it's not easy. It's not easy question, not easy to answer. And then we are returned from Radakunda. Shogurda ask us, what's the question you uh, uh, ask from Madhugapal? And I thought, uh, I ask about Pranaya. Because I want, I, I, I want to understand what does mean Pranaya in this verse. Just Prema or particular kind of Prema. What does it mean Pranaya? Shirada, Pranaya, Mahima. And Shogura thought, you know, until you in Manjari Baba, nobody will explain this subject. It's too much intimate, too much confidential. But you must know, uh, they pranaya non-stop. They pranaya non-stop. It, they always united. Always. It seems like Shemat Radhika returned from Nandishwar to Yavat. Oh, she is already in Yavat, but in the heart, they always in union. She never doing even step from him because she is so rata. Actually, it's very clear to understand when Krishna is the most beautiful, Radharani has to be in him. Otherwise, how he can be beautiful? <laughs> when I was in Gaudiamat, one of the favorite uh, songs for me, Madurashtaka. And I always meditate not on Krishna, but on Radha in him. Always I said, how sh he can be so sweet. Must be Radha in him. <laughs> like this. And once I asked Shri Gurudev about Madurashtaka, and he told, is this song which is came from Shimati Radhika? It's not from Balbacharya. These songs belong to Shimati Radhika. <laughs> like the songs she's teaching to Tulasi. They're also coming from her. <laughs> Finally, she enters a kunja with her pranana and relishes all kinds of sweet pastimes with him there. When the vision disappears, Sri Raghunath anxiously brays as follows. O oh, dedicated Rati, O oh, sweetly speaking girl, O oh, Empress of Braj, you play blissful rasic pastimes with Girid Hari, the Lord of your life, and your crooked, playful, clever, and rasic girlfriends. Jai Jai Shirati.
So the next quote of Chaitanya Child Amrita I found is in verse number 89. It's the verse, O Sadaye, merciful girl, when will you shyly take me far away from your girlfriends to a cave of Govardhan Hill? To teach me beautiful songs and different tunes there. These confidential and wonderful songs, you see, we stay in the tune, cannot be heard by anyone else but Swamini's most intimate maidservants. They are meant to be sung by Tulasi while Swamini is alone with Shyam and Shyam has fainted out of amorous ecstasy with their extraordinary beauty and sweetness the Raj Sundaris are able to astonish Sri Krishna. Hence, their love is called Samartha Rati. The love of a pure devotee has such extraordinary power and glory that it astonishes Sri Krishna. Bhaktira Brema Chesta Dikki Krishnera Chamatkara Chaitanya Charit Amrita The love of the Braj Sundaris is of the highest class. Hence, their Samartha Rati is most astonishing. The sweetness of the love of Srimati Radharani, who is endowed with Madanakya Mahabhav, is astonishing Krishna so much that it makes him faint. Even Swamini is then baffled and unable to find a means to reawaken him. Only her maid servants that are well trained in the art of singing divine songs are able to break this swoon. No one else. Again, no one else. This is what distinguishes the kinkaris from the sakis. This is the very confidential service rendered by the maidservants. Wow! So we see aren't we in a good position? I mean if we just stay tuned here aren't we in a good position if we still can have this association with persons who deeply dive in, who are completely addicted if we can have this association and share like that.
It's very rare that something can astonish Krishna, isn't it? Radhacharan, you wanted to share something. Uh, I heard from you what how is um, pre pressure a valuable uh, situation when uh, someone close to Rasika Vajnav. Because how Shonaranga Samaraj explained, even is Rasika Vaishnava not speaking Parikatha and speaking some Prajalpa means local news, what's happening here. But oh he, he, he is not speaking anything, but he is constantly constantly shined by the his Manjari Bhava, always. He loved his love to uh, Ishtadevata always, and the and if you are close, more close, more quickly you will get critical dosage of radiation of this effulgence, and your how to say structure of your how to say existence body will change. Let's say it will change in such a way no not possible to return for, for the previous state. It's it's so interesting what I have experienced here. Of course, anyway, I have experienced here when I'm reading these devotees, uh, Vilap Kusumanjali sitting here in the basement, like now, or with Gurudev. Even if Gurdjieff not speaking, just lie down and taking rest. I found already a difference. Of course, if someone have deep connection with Shima, uh, with Shri Gurudev, like today, Sumiti told, oh, yesterday, yesterday, she, yeah, yesterday was German Zoom. Yesterday she told, I can feel it. Even Shri Gurudev not present here, but I can feel his presence. It, I remember once it was one festival here, and Gurdev came, uh, seated. When he just seated and then he spoke, I feel like I'm sitting close to the generator of energy. I, I feel from him is coming, 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 even he is not speaking. And um, how to say, I don't know what's in English, in English. Uh, individual uh, capacity of development depend on association. What kind of association? What kind of goals I will receive from through this association? Association with Radhika Dasi, with Rasika Vaishnava, is through this association, soul can receive maximum. This uh, Kinkari service. Maximum. If someone, if hard get it, it's like addiction. No, I am bad, I am sinful, but heart is still it. No, anyway, I want it. <laughs> and and this desire is only growing and gradually bringing, bringing, bringing to the goal. It's like magnet and iron. So wonderful. So in this way, we can conclude that we are also like something like radioactive, let's say Radhi, Radha active. Even though Gurudev will not speak, just, just be there, he's Radha active, like radioactive. And whoever is there will be changed and it cannot be made in the old situation. It's gone. Changed forever. So Radha active. Wonderful. We are not just addicted. 
We are also radioactive by the mercy of Gurudev Radha active. Because his mercy, and this is the wonderful thing, is coming to everyone. And my observation is like that. Even one who is not initiated by him, just heard about him, saw a picture, and is attracted and says, Yes, this is my guru. <laughs> like that. Accept him in the heart. Immediately, change is coming. I saw it person still going around and saying, this is my guru, but he's not initiated, he never meet Guru Dev, really. He was, he, he's just attracted by a picture. But it works inside. And the amazing thing, if such a person goes around, others are also attractive, also speak like this, it also comes to them. It's like the real pandemic, the Brema pandemic. <laughs> but you don't have to even touch that person. The radiation is enough. The Bremaiation is enough. This subject uh, came from the morning meeting because today's Gaura Sundar explained about uh, he he used uh, analogy with virus when someone uh, close to the sick person more he close more touching more breathing same air more quantity of virus will be in his body and gradually he becomes sick. Radha Dasi, Raisa Kavaishnav, in this word, crying, he is sick with Shemati Radhika. <laughs> it's today, Gorasan Ramon in time explained. So this Raisa Kavaishnav is sick because he is crying. Or not only crying, he can come, please, I don't know what's in English. Also, so many different uh, perspiration, different colors. <laughs> I can be mad. And if someone helping to him, gradually he will get too much this virus and also become same. And then uh, how do you how to uh, how, to, uh, how you told this word pandemia? Yes, and we are in the middle of this, in the midst of that. It flooded already the whole existence. This is the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And actually, the point is what we just heard here, that the kinkari is playing the love song and bringing back the blue boy from the swoon. Actually, this is the limit of human perfection. It's the limit. Because we are not just watching the exchange of the highest love, no. We are in the midst, we are needed for the exchange. We have an active role in it. Without our action, it will not come to that stage. This is the limit, the perfection. And this is the great gift of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu.
So how to get there? Usual question after we spoke about the limit. How to get there fast? It's also written here. Without bath, feelings, one cannot taste rasa, spiritual flavor. Without rasa, there can be no development of bhava, and without bhava and rasa, there can be no ananda. And we know ananda is always there where Radha and Krishna come together and exchange their Mahabha. So it's a clear answer to that question. Everything begin, begins with feelings. And even in the material world, we know we have different chakras, energy centers, but that means also subtle body. Body of feeling is there. More or less everyone knows. We don't just have this cross body, we also have a body of feelings. So this feelings body is the base we use. It's the connection to the soul and the connection to our Bhavadeya. So what we have to do is to live more feelings, more Bhava, but in the right connection, of course. Instead of feelings for something material or a person in the material world on a material base, we start to have feelings in the connection with Radhadasyam. And this is what we are doing here, isn't it? So the answer of the question lies in our activity. Without bhava, one cannot taste rasa, spiritual flavor. Without rasa, there can be no development of bhava. And without bhava and rasa, there can be no ananda. This is a well-known truth. So if we try to realize the purpose of these words, then we can understand that even a slightest drop from the stream of topmost transcendental bliss that constantly floats from the fountain head of all universal causes. Mahabhavaradha embraced by Maharas. Krishna is keeping the whole world alive. So the next quote I found in verse number 90. It's about the uh, 
uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and uh, Swarup Damoda and other devotees, uh, Rupa Goswami. So let's see, it's Ah, here we can begin. There's another statement. Okay, so Swamini uses the names of another hero and heroine in her romantic poems and reads them to her maid servant Tulasi. Knowing her to be her closest confidant. She will not keep anything hidden in them, and she feels very happy while revealing these secrets to her maidservants. While Sriman Mahaprabhu danced before the card of Lord Jagannath during the Ratha Yatra in Puri, he sang the verse Ya Kaumara Hara Sa Eva Hi Varaha. He is my man who took my maidenhood. From the Kavya Prakash about a mundane hero and a heroine. See Chaitanya Charit Amrita Matya Lila 13 and Antya 1. No one but Swarup Damoda could understand the transcendental meaning of Bhagavat Ras, the Lord found in this verse. When Srimad Rupa Goswami heard this verse from the Lord's divine mouth, he understood the Lord's inner bhav and they revealed it by writing the verse Briya Soyang Krishna. He is my beloved Krishna. When the Lord found his verse on a palm leaf on the roof of Haridas Thakur's thatched cottage, he asked Sri Rupa, No one could understand the meaning of my verse. How did you know the feelings on my mind? Saying this, he bestowed great mercy upon Sri Rupa and showed the verse to Swarupdamada. In amazement, the Lord asked Swarup, How did Rupa know what was on my mind? Swarupdamada replied, I know that only someone who has received your grace can know what is on your mind. The Lord said, I am satisfied with him. He embraced Sri Rupa and empowered him completely, saying, He is qualified to understand the confidential rasa. Tell him everything about the glories of these confidential flavors. So again, actually, it's proved what we said. Only by the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu one can understand only by the mercy he made all of this age qualified to understand by his mercy. So whoever wants his mercy, he has it already. It's like the palm leaves, you know. Only who comes there, it's written on the palm leaf, his astrology 
uh, things, his information, you know. You know that. So, everyone who wants it, it's there for him. It's there for everyone who wants it. And only by the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we got the qualification. And here it's proved. Swarup Damoda is saying, I know that only someone who has received your grace can know what is on your mind. Then he is embracing Sri Rupa, giving him full mercy and saying, tell him everything about the glories of these confidential flavors. These Rupa and Tulasi Bambraj are there in Gora Lila, Rupa and Raghunathas. That is why Swamini is so happy to reveal her inner feelings to them. As the teacher is, so is the pupil. Tulasi learns these poems after a single hearing. How beautiful it is to learn this poetry from her and to recite it. I am your maidservant, and you will mold me with your own hands. Jai Jai Sri Rade. So the next quote from Chaitanya Charitamrita I found is in verse number 93. Such wonderful topics today, my God, we really have to. How you say? If ice is melting on the tongue, so we have to let it melt in the ears. <laughs> so this verse is about the chewed better leaves. given affectionately from Swamini's mouth into Tulasi's mouth directly. Those who give up all other spiritual practices and goals and desire only the supreme goal of Sri Rata's service. Always chant her name in Sankirtan and automatically attain the desired perfection. Again, let it melt 
in the ears. It's such a wonderful statement. Those who give up all other spiritual practices and goals, all other spiritual practices and goals, and desire only the supreme goal of Sri Radha's service, always chant her name in Sanketan and automatically, automatically attain their desired perfection. How merciful this path is! It's the most highest path of realization and it's the most merciful one. Those who simply think, simply think, I am Radha's maidservant and consider this attainment to be the perfection of everything, will automatically attain a result which is beyond fancy. You cannot even think about what you will attain. It's impossible. Those who simply think, I am Radha's maidservant, and consider this attainment to be the perfection of everything, will automatically attain a result which is beyond fancy. The practice needed to attain that extraordinary result is the loving congregational chanting of the holy name of Rasa Rasika, Sri Krishna the relisher of the Rasa dance. Nama Sankirtan is the best means to attain this perfection, for it's full of flavor and full of bliss. Even in the material world it is seen that when one discusses the qualities of a certain great person, that person may be pleased, but he will not respond. But when one calls him by name, whether it is in brace or in blasphemy, he will immediately respond, even though he may be far away. The best way to attain Sriman Mahaprabhu's greatest gift of Radha Dasya is the sweet practice of Nama Sankhita. Aje bravu kohen shuno swarup ramaroi Nama Sankhita kalau parama upoi Chaitanya Charit Amrita Joyfully the Lord said, Listen, O Swarup and Ramananda Roy. In the age of Kali, Nama Sankirtan is the best way to salvation. Swamini thinks to herself, Tulasi is doing a wonderful service. 
I must reward her. But what if Lalita and my other girlfriends would see it? I would die of shame. So she looks in all four directions before she pushes her jeweled battle nuts from her mouth into Tulasi's mouth in an unseen way. While Tulasi hangs the necklace back on her neck. In this way, she gives her dear Tulasi a just reward for her loving service. In the same better leaf that Shyam Sundara pushed into her mouth while he enjoyed with her, and Swamini knows how much Tulasi cherishes that. Krishna ye koi tambula, kohi tara nahi mula, tahe ara dhamba paripati, tara yeba udgara, tare koi amrita sara, gopira mukka kore alabati. Chaitanya Charit Amrita Anjalila 16. I cannot describe the value and the complete pride. Of the better leaves, Krishna eats. Whatever he spits out is called the essence of nectar, and he uses the gopi's mouth as spittoons. In these better leaves lie the savour of their lip nectar. Parama dhulapa e Krishna dhara amrita taha ye poitara sapala chivita. Chaitanya Charit Amrita. This lip nectar of Krishna is the most precious in the life of anyone who obtains it is successful. Where can this lip nectar be relished to the utmost? Love is required for experience the sweetness of Krishna's sound, touch and flavors. Srila Chiva Goswami says Krishna Bantu Yasya Brahmaikasvadyatvam Krishna's sweetness is only relishable through pure love. And who is pure love? But not everyone tastes it in the same way. Amara Madhuya Nitya Nava Nava Hoy Svasva Prema Anurupa Bhakta Ashwadoy Chaitanya Charit Amita My sweetness is ever fresh. And each devotee relishes it according to the amount of his own love. As you can see, Chaitanya Charit Amrita everywhere in this purport. Quote after quote. It is not the presence of some object that makes it relishable, but the power that the senses may have for taking it. We can also judge whether there is power in the senses to take the object when we see them taking them. In the same way, we cannot say that everyone will be able to take, appreciate or relish, appreciate or relish the sweetness of the Lord, although it may be right before their eyes, in the form 
of a deity or picture. Only love is the cause of relishing the Lord's sweetness. Without love, nothing of, Lord's, of the Lord's sweetness can be relished. And again, the sweetness can be relished according to the amount of love we feel for the Lord. We can know whether a person loves God or not and how much he loves God according to the amount that the person relishes the Lord's sweetness. Sri Radhika's love is unlimited and therefore only she can relish Krishna's sweetness to the utmost no one else but she has unlimited love and therefore no one else but she can relish Krishna's endless sweetness to the utmost. Sri Radhika's love is unlimited so she is able to fully taste his unlimited sweetness and the sweetness of his chewed better leaves. E prema tvare nitya radhika e kali amara madhuyamrita aswade sakali Chaitanya charit amrita Through this love only Radhika is able to relish all of my Nectarian sweetness. Jai Jai Sri Radhe. And in the same way, it is only our love to Radhika who let us taste the sweetness of her, of her Mahabha. So please, can you give me your mercy that this love will wake up in my heart and grow as fast as possible. <laughs>